session players back then. It's just part yeah. of the wrecking crew, right? Yeah, yeah, it was just the way it was back then. Yeah. And her and her and Glenn Campbell, Glenn played uh, a guitar and she played bass, and they sat by each other and they they sat there and made their three or two or three dollars an hour and and played their songs and did their hits and. And Brian Wilson used them, and they played nearly on every Beach Boy song and every Righteous Brothers song, and you name it. So um, she was telling me uh, all, all about the, how she played with the monkey on the Monkey songs. Wow! And uh, Boyce and Tommy Boyce and Bobby Hart, you know, wrote a lot of the songs and played on on the sessions until the Monkeys got good enough, and then they finally started doing it. So it's quite it's quite a story to hear all that. That's pretty fascinating. Yeah, and I guess you could yeah. call those musicians like Carol Kay. You'd say she's the house bassist for the '60s, pretty much. Oh, the, she was the number one house bassist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When, when they needed something, she played. In fact, on the new show, I do about a ten-minute. It's about a ten or fifteen-minute actually uh, interview I did with her last year okay. uh, in Vegas, and it's on the new show that that's coming out tomorrow. So if you get a chance to listen to it, it's it's toward the end of the show, but I, I spend the last 10 or 15 minutes on the show uh, talking with her and naming off just a few of the people. I, I, it would take an hour to name everybody she played with, literally. Wow. I mean, it's, she had over 10,000 sessions wow. that, she, that she played. And if if it was if it was a movie or if it was a, like a, one of those hour shows like Hawaii Five-0 or uh, Mannix or whatever, she, she played the song. And and uh, just about played just about. It. She came up with a riff on Sunny and Cher. Uh, the uh, the beat goes on. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. that she, riff, yeah. She came up with that riff. Dun, 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 dun. She came up with that. Wow. Speaking and, uh, of your show, when can, when and where can we listen to it? Uh, let's see. It's on uh, right now. I, I was going to syndicate it out to a bunch of stations, and I. Really didn't want to lose control of it because I've tried that before and I'm not I'm not too crazy about doing that. So we we decided to start our own network and it's just called the David Mobley Show dot com. And if you go there, it's a combination of you can hear all the shows. They they we, we do a new show. It's it's kind of crazy. We do one when we kind of feel like it and when we all get together and <laughs> get one done. But okay. we average one one new every two weeks or so, and we so we put them into uh, we we got to deal with the live three sixty five, and we started it at work there, and so the shows play there spontaneous just, just one after another, with okay. some of my guests that I know some of my famous people I know or, or whatever you want to call them. Uh, kind of doing promos in between and and d- just small little mini interviews and stuff like that. But then uh, we debut the show uh, Thursday. Let's see, on Sun- oh, let me start over. We start the we do them on third. Let's see, Sunday Sunday afternoons at three o'clock Eastern time and twelve okay. o'clock Pacific. Oh, so, we definitely that, need to go on, on there to David, listen to some of these. Yeah, that's on the David Mobley Show dot com. So, and when you go to that site, it automatically just fires up and starts playing whatever show it's on. It says shows number one, number one, show number two is on. It's on there right now. Show number three will start on there at three o'clock Eastern time tomorrow. Okay, and, and you know on that show, oh, I've, 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 we're also in Sacramento. Uh, we've got one, we're the only the only other radio station outside of what I do is HotMix106.com in Sacramento. Oh, that's really cool. I'll check it out here. Um, yeah, it's uh, HotMix106.com, and it plays at nine o'clock Eastern time on Sunday night, and then again at the same time on Thursday night. Okay, very good. I'm glad they had the um, good sense to pick up your show. You just don't hear a lot of indie stuff like that well, on commercial we, we radio. Well, we've been she, she's, uh, uh, Corey Marcus is the um, is the owner of that. She has she's been there for a long time, and she kind of taught me the ropes a little bit about the the radio deal because I had never done anything before this this Todd Rutherford deal I was telling y'all about out in Sacramento. Mm-hmm. And we hooked up. She was doing a live remote out there, and she's the one that kind of hooked me up. And I uh, said, why don't you do a show? And I said, are you crazy? I said, did you hear me talking? I mean, I, mean, I sound like an uneducated idiot at best, you know, being from oh, Texas. Texas. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> I thought she was insane. But she said, no, you know, you'll, you'll probably be okay. And I said, yeah, probably. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> we'll try it. So that's how the radio, that's how I got into this radio thing. So, But my main deal is producing and songwriting. 
That's but, Steve, but, I'm, but I'm having a blast doing the show. Absolutely. It's fun. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting. I, I checked out some of the artists that you've interviewed, and coincidentally enough, you've had a couple of my musician friends on your shows. You've interviewed Maxie Dunn and Vinny Zuma already. Um, oh, yeah, me and Vinny, we became real good friends. In fact, I just got a phone with him yesterday. So. Okay, great guy. Yeah, um, he he was the guitarist for Joe Jackson and many others. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, Vinny was on the either the first or second show. He's on one of them. Uh, he, that you'll, if you if you listen to him, he's on one of. But yeah, Vinny's unbelievable. I mean, he just uh, he's a, him and a guy named Michael Bame. Uh, if you've never talked to Michael Bame up in Vancouver, you need to get a hold of him, Mike. He's ah. Awesome. Yeah. He's he's uh, he's played with Bon Jovi, and he is a just unbelievable uh, songwriter and producer. Absolutely. Wow. Have to check him out. So how yeah. do you? Um, how do you um, find indie artists to interview on your shows? I mean, that's that's my passion is indie artists, and that's Pam's too. How do you find right. them for your show? Well, when we when I first started the show, I, I had my website already, and I have a lot of a lot of uh, again, I hate to use the word famous, but a lot you know a lot of people that are well known in the music business, uh, and I've had you know I know a lot of them, and I've I've met most about everybody that can be met. <laughs> Out there, and yeah. so uh, we just kind of started putting it up there on the web, and and people, I think a lot of people had already seen my site, and so when I started doing the radio show, I just got bombed. And we we had the same problem. We thought, who are we going to get? And uh, by pro- one of the producers on the show said, well, maybe we can go to YouTube and find people, and we thought we were going to have to start digging. Uh. Well, we we got started. We started getting hit with ten to fifteen a day. Mm-hmm. Of people wow. wanting to be on the show, and it was like well, I had to bring in five or six of my friends just to help me just filter through. Right. And and I started meeting people from all over the world, and 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 of course we couldn't play everybody. Uh, some of them we would gently tell them you, you're not, it's not radio ready what you have, uh, but we would tell them what to do and how to do it and maybe where to go. And many of them did it and and got their songs radio ready, and we would play them. Oh, I recently giving... started an indie show, and I thought the same thing. How am I going to get some people mm-hmm. on my show yeah. and, and play their music? And all I do is tweet it out, and I've been flooded. So I've got they're, they're quite hungry. a few they're emails. Hungry, as they should be. It's, it's the same thing, uh, Pam, mm-hmm. as, uh, as everybody that's that's made it big time. They they weren't always big time. You know? Right. They, they, had to, they had to get out and fight and ride down from Willie Nelson all the way up, Christopherson, all of them. They've told me, you know, what had, they had to go through. Right, and, uh, exactly. Everybody's an indie when they start. Oh, yes. There's You're no nobody thing when you start out famous. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You know, you what's interesting get... What's interesting is that the technology really enables that, though. I mean, there's so many more ways to get your music and get your name out there now than yeah. there ever used to be. It's good, and it's bad, Mike, because it's, it's so easy now that everybody can do it. So, ah. uh it kind of waters down. You have to. There's a lot more filtering out to do because you got to love people that think they're musicians or think they're going to be the right. Star. And, and <laughs> yes. that's, that's great to feel that way, but you know, a lot of them are eons away from it. Yeah. And, and, you, and it's hard to tell them, so you have to be very careful. Yeah. Um, and, and there's a but there's a lot of gold gems out there too that yet to be discovered. And uh, mm-hmm. boy, when you find one, it's like wow. You know, you you need to. Find a label, or you need to promote yourself. And these days, you don't have to have a label anymore. I'm not even big on labels. Um, it just so happened that Dave Evans, when I did this deal with them, him, they're from the old school still. You know, Dave being from ACDC and Johnny being from Capitol. But they still believe that you have to have that uh, label, which is fine. I mean, I'm, I'm all for it if that's what you want. But there's other avenues, too, you can take uh, if you believe in yourself and and you've got a little bit of money and the know how to promote yourself, you can you can still get out there and make it without the label. It seems well, like you what could would do you it on suggest sort of... to an indie artist that is looking for a label? How do they get heard these days? I mean there's they practically oh. close the doors on that. Yes, they have. You've nearly these days you've nearly got to know somebody. Um I know. I, I just don't know how else to put it. You nearly got to know somebody or have some kind of connection, or else you're never going to get in the door. I mean, yeah. you, you'll literally never even get in the door. They'll, if you send them something, they'll just, you'll never hear from them or they'll trace exactly. you. Exactly, exactly. Um, in the old days, it would be like sending them a cassette, 
and wrapping it up and please, 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 you know, and all right. that stuff to them. And, and, and you would never hear from anybody. You yeah. had to know somebody. And it's still the same way that they, these days. Um, you know, my but, heart breaks for them because they're know, trying too. so hard. I mean, if they would just give them a listen and, and even just give them a reply of, not now. Uh, yeah. See you later. You know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Work you on ain't this. Got a you know, chance. something. You, know, you keep your day job to something. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you know, I, think I was one of those starving songwriters back in the '70s and and uh, and even the '80s that uh, we we just my partner and I we would write everything in the world and we thought we had some good songs and and still to this day we've been told that we had some good songs but we never heard a word from anybody. Mm. And I think it's been the perfect storm. That's kind of led to the whole indie music explosion in the first place. Exactly. Mm-hmm. The lack of yep. feedback from the labels and then the technology that lets you, if you have talent, lets you put it out there. Right, right. And I think the the, uh, the labels have had to change, had to have a little bit of change of heart because they can't, uh, they're not getting what they used to. And it's kind of, I think it's kind of kicked them in the rear a little bit too. So, right, and you know, with the new shows that are out there, well, not necessarily yep. new anymore, like American Idol and The Voice and that, right. you know, indies are getting exposure that way, and that's exactly. where I think some of the labels are picking up, you know, some of these artists, but unless you're on that show, you really don't have a chance in heck, you know, getting somebody to listen to you. No, no, and, and, and you've got to get down to the top 10 or 15 right. to, even, to, to, to get discovered there. In fact, I was just with... Uh, uh, Kelly Clarkson and, and uh, Taylor Hicks last week. Um, oh, well, uh, in, in fact, there I've got them on my on my website. If you go to the website, I've got pictures of us and we were up at parties together. And, we, and of course, when I go to these places with with these people, I talk to them and they, you know, we we'd go through the whole bit. And Taylor, in fact, I was just with him last uh, Thursday, no, last Wednesday night out in Vegas, and the Wednesday before last, and he was telling me how hard it was. Uh, on, on uh, I think he won season five, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. But he was telling me how hard it was. And yeah, course, even if you win, there's no even guarantee. If, oh, he said, yeah, if you win, it's even tougher because you're wow. automatically signed. You, you, they they own you for a year. Right. And Kelly Clarkson was telling me, and I guess y'all know if y'all have heard recently about the biography that uh, oh I can't think of his name the the old time producer. Uh, I wish I could think of his name right now. I'm having a hard time. Lack of sleep is doing that to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he, no he just problem. came out with this. But anyway, he he um, is the guy that pretty much owns ever who wins uh, oh. the American Idol, and um, they're stuck with him for a year, which is good. I mean, because he oh, oh Clive, Clive Davis, Clive Davis. Oh right. Oh, okay. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, Kelly Clarkson and him had a huge fallout because oh, okay. she she wanted to go against the grain a little bit and not do exactly what he wanted, and she wanted to put out her own stuff. And of course, he had his ideas, and as as he should. I mean, he's he's seasoned a seasoned veteran. He's probably knows more than anybody uh, all of us put together. But she decided to be a rogue, and she was telling me all about it. And she she pretty much. Just told him, you know, where to where to put it. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and and they broke off, and and of course, then he then he badmouthed her uh, in his uh, in his autobiography, and so that made her upset. So one thing led to another. So the music business can be nasty. Uh, right. I don't know what my point was going to be, but she survived and she's doing great. She's come out with some real good songs. I think Avril Lavigne wrote her some good songs, and uh, Kelly wrote a couple of herself. And yeah, she I mean she's certainly with, an example of a major success story from yeah, that kind yeah, of show. Yeah, she really is. Yeah, they can. You know, a lot of people say, "Well, it's reality." She, you know, I mean, it was it was like the monkeys were. They were put together and is artificial. Well, not really. I mean, the monkeys might have been artificial, but there was some talent there. But people like Kelly Clarkson, she's not artificial. She would have made it one way or the other. Yeah, she, this just puts you puts you ahead, you know, quite a bit faster. And you know, it did. Yeah, it made it easier on her, Mike. You're right. That's, yeah, that's, some musicians that's... would kill to have a year with Clive Davis or oh something my of God. My, Of course they would. Uh, even even with me, what I've said, I I, I would. I mean, I, he would. I could learn from him so much, and, and I think he's pushing late seventies or eighty. But, but gosh, what he must have in his head, you know, what he knows. Yeah, so. absolutely. 
Absolutely. Well, what I, I drew you into music in the first place? What got me into music? 